Hey curlies. Okay, so this video today, um, really just to my end of the week look. Um, today's wash day, it's Sunday, so it's gonna go through its whole little pampering phrase. But um I had some questions um that are usually tweeted to me, messaged to me, or just commented below. And um recently I was asked a question from one of my followers about transitioning. Um I personally did not transition. Um, I've seen people transition. I know about transitioning. Um, so this is just basically what I suggest when transitioning. And her question was, um, she's been transitioning for four months now and she wears sew-ins. And what does she suggest for a regimen? Well, what I have seen most people do that do sew-ins, they will wear their sew-ins till they feel that their their length is comfortable enough to wear out if they do not choose to do the big chop or, um, you know, if they just don't want to go through the whole transition phase with the twist outs and don't want to go through all the maintenance. Um, I do feel that you should sometimes go through the maintenance to get a feel of what your natural hair is because that's when I find that most people that end up going natural don't like to be natural because they're not used to being natural. I'm um, just plain and simple like that. That's my opinion. Um, I have a lot of people that come to me. Oh, I could never go natural. Um, I can't do the natural look. Well, why not? And most of the time it's just because either they aren't comfortable with natural. They're not educated on natural. They're not. I don't know what it is. Maybe you're just not comfortable with being you. I mean, there are times that I feel people would approach me, say, oh, I like you better straight. Okay, well, I like me better natural because I feel more free. I don't feel like, oh, my hair is going to frizz. Oh, don't let the wind blow too hard. Oh, can't go outside. It just rained. No, I'm going to be natural. So I might as well embrace the frizz, embrace the wind, embrace everything that comes with it because... My hair's not perfect and the weather's not perfect. So on a perfect day, hair's not going to be perfect. Okay, so just going back to that. Um, one thing I just feel that if you like sew-ins, keep sew-ins. Because that's what you're going to be more comfortable with. You're not going to be comfortable with curly old puffy ass roots and straight pieces that look all tired and dangly and dead. You just Basically, it's permed hair and natural hair. And it's going to come in a big, straight, even natural dead so at the end it's just gonna look crazy and everybody looks crazy don't think you're the only person looks crazy don't get mad because i'm saying you're gonna look crazy everybody looks crazy going natural that's why people have different types of regimens now like i said if you are used to being you know getting sew-ins and everything continue to do sew-ins do you that's that's how your look is continue your sew-ins um so you feel about your hair is a good length. Now, if you're the type of person that does sew-ins and leaves hair out, I wouldn't suggest that because you're going to leave that hair out and that hair is going to be processed and it's going to be straightened and it's not going to have a curl pattern. It may have a curl pattern. Bless you if it does end up with a curl pattern, but it's not going to match the rest of your hair that's just growing out. If, if you understand what I'm saying, because the hair that's growing out isn't being processed. It's not being touched. Heat is a chemical, so it's not being chemically treated. It is just naturally growing out. And, you know, when you take out your sew-ins, treat your hair as if you do have natural hair, you know. Use oils. Use a curling cream. See, see what it's starting to look like. And at that end, you know, if you feel comfortable with that length, start cutting. And, you, of course, you're going to have to cut off some of the dead pieces. And, of course, you have to realize the length that your hair is with the dead hair is not going to be the same length because it's all grown out natural because there are things considered as shrinkage, which most women do not realize. Shrinkage is evil. Shrink shrinkage is the devil. All of us natural girls know it. Most girls coming into the natural world know nothing about shrinkage. And they think, oh, look how long my hair is. And cut that short, wash and go, protect the style. Something is going to lose its length really, really fast. And a lot of people say, I can't wait till my hair gets as big as yours. I've been natural for a long time. I've only been doing the curly girl method for three years. I started um, summer of 2010. I started the curly girl method when um, my best friend Kels Mania decided to go natural and she did the big chop. So along with her, I took, you know, my no heat to minimal heat pledge. Now I'm on a one year no heat pledge and I absolutely love it. I mean, I can't wait to straighten my hair, but 
I can't wait to straighten my hair. I may pass my one year mark, which is June, and just wait all the way till July 31st, which is my birthday, and get my hair done for my birthday. Um, so yeah, if you're a transitioner um, and you have a method that you're already using, such as sew-ins or um, if you're not doing someone's, if you think braids would be good, if you think faux twists, you know, Marley twists, anything like that, keep that rolling, keep that going because that's just helping your hair grow more and more and more. It's not being touched. You know, it's not being processed. It's, it's not being nothing. It's just growing. Oil your scalp. Get into curly girl methods. Um, you know, learn the ways that we tie up our hair at night, the way we do our co-washes, know what a, you know, a wash day is. Just get into that feel, get into the lingo, get into the, the Instagram, get into the start following on Tumblr, get into the Facebook pages, get into it on YouTube, get into it before you get into it and you don't like it. Um, now, if you are a transitioner and you just can't wait to do the big chop, more power to you. I never did the big chop. I kind of transitioned when I was younger in high school to just not getting perms. I definitely did a, what I call a big chop because I stopped getting relaxers when I was in 10th grade. So three years later, my freshman year of college, I cut all my hair. And I mean, I didn't big chop to like a ball fade, but I mean like I had past bra strength length hair when it straightened, but you can see it was damaged. It had been straightened so much, even though it was natural, it was just straightened so much. It had heat damage like crazy. My hair would crinkle if I tried to wear it curly. It would just crinkle and frizz. Like the same shape that I have right now is the same shape I've always had. So just imagine that flat and crinkly. I got some pictures. It wasn't pretty. So... I decided I want, I, I call it, when I was in high school, I called it virgin hair. I heard someone say that if you don't get relaxers in three to four years, your hair could grow up to be virgin hair. And I was like, oops, I'm down for that. I want virgin hair. Um, I'm mixed. I have naturally curly hair. I want my curly hair back. That's how I thought. And so when I was a freshman in college, I basically just cut off to like, not ear length, but like neck length, like right here. So like all this hair that came right here was just gone. And I remember I washed my hair and I was into mousse and scrunch gel at the time. <laughs> and I remember I did my mousse, like I would do a leave-in and then I did my, no, I did my gel, like I would do a leave-in and then I did my mousse, like I would do a styler. <laughs> and I just walked out the door and my hair just had all kind of little ringlets and I was just so excited, but it was hard. It was dry. Once it would like, the wet look was cute, but once it would dry, it would just be a big puff ball. And I was like, mm, well, maybe this curly hair is it for me. And so that took me a while to get used to. So that was around 2007, eight, nine, 10. So three years after that, I started wearing my hair curly. And even though I had been straightening my hair a lot, the odd thing, it just took me literally like one month to bounce back. To, if you, if you kind of get what I'm saying, like even though I had uh, been natural for six years at this point, um, I hadn't gotten relaxers in six years, I had been straightening my hair with a, a straightener for six years. So I put the straightener down for like one month and my hair just started curling and then that's when I started getting into detangling with conditioners with a wide tooth comb. I learned that from YouTube. I learned how to um I learned don't use mousse, don't use gel, use a leave-in. That's the first thing. Cause I was like, girl, you need a leave-in. And I was like, a leave-in? She was like, yeah, leave-in conditioner. I was like, I haven't used a leave-in since I was like six. My mom would put leave-in conditioner in my hair. And so I found a leave-in. And I think my first leave-in was um Garnier Fruities Sleek and Shine Leave-In Conditioner. It worked great for me. It worked great. I loved it. I think I had a John Frieda Dream Curls that was kind of like in a purple and mm, sandy shaded bottle. 
and you can see the liquid and the conditioner and you just shake it and you spray that. So, I mean, I would put the leave in and, and I'm, yeah, I'm washing my hair every day at this point to, you know, try to see my curls spring back. I was doing a wash and go every day to every other day. And yes, my hair was short still. I had just gotten it cut again. So I kept my hair cut. And I think that's one of the, the good things because my hair was growing fast and I was keeping it cut. So I guess I would just keep cutting dead ends off. Maybe that's how I maintain my, my natural hair to bounce back. So wet, fit, 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 fast. Um, then I think around, I'm sorry, I have allergies, guys. Sorry. Um, then I think around, so that was about April. I started doing that. You could kind of say, no, April, May. About June, I started doing that in July. And then August is when we went back to school. And August 1st is when she did her big chop. And then, she, I mean, she was more educated than me. And she was doing a big chop. And she had transitioned the same way. She did sewings. But the thing was, she curled, straightened constantly the front pieces. And that was what she called her security blanket for not being natural. And that's the first thing she cut off. And that's how it happened. She just cut that bang off. And next thing she called me, she was like, I cut all my hair off. And I was excited for her. Like she felt beautiful. I mean, she rocked it, how she rocked it with the big earrings. And that's the thing. If you're not ready to big chop and you want to transition, rock it how you feel beautiful. This is all about being beautiful. This isn't about, oh, I don't want to be processed. I don't want to be the perm girl. I don't want to be this. Those natural girls have a... No, I don't care what anybody says. Oh, you have a swag. You have this and that. No, I'm comfortable. It's all about being comfortable. Like you can have... Most girls have a head full of hair, but they love weave. Like else. Like my best friend. Like all my friends love weave. Have head full of hair but they love weave if that's what makes you feel beautiful that's what makes you feel beautiful I don't feel comfortable with weave I don't feel comfortable with straight hair I used to you could never take weave out of my hair or you could never not straighten my hair but I've just begin to feel so much better this way and that's just all that matters so yeah if you want to transition for a while with um sew-ins do that be sure not to leave your hair out so if you can do an invisible part beautiful if you can if you can't minimize how much you straighten it just know that you will be having to cut more off that front because that little wavy look you're gonna get tired of it um also when it is time to clip those ends don't don't depend on that dead hair to be the length of your hair. Do no shrinkage is coming. If you haven't felt it yet, it's coming. Shrinkage is coming for you. Uh, shrinkage is coming for everyone because shrinkage is the devil. Um, but yeah, the whole point of going natural is to be you. Be, be you. Like Be comfortable being you. Don't be comfortable fitting in with the image of the natural girls. Because yes, it's going to take time to get this bigger than life hair this is three years of dying, cutting, chopping, doing what God knows to it. And my hair is finally like, you know what? I like you again. I'm going to start acting right. I'm going to start being good. And I mean, it just depends on what you put in is what you get out. And how you treat it is how it reacts. So, yeah. To all you curlies out there, if you have any more questions... Want any more stories, any more real life events, any more advice, any more babbling, you know where to find me. All right. Y'all have a good day.